Welcome again, brothers and sisters, uh, to a continuation of the series of uh, the explanation of the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam. Today we will continue the second session of belief in divine books. We will start off with a couple of important points that I would like to make here uh, regarding belief in books. Now, believing in uh, the previous divine books does not mean or entail that we believe in the existing books amongst the Jews and the Christians because the original scriptures that were revealed by Allah Azza wa Jal were changed and altered and thus what they have uh, with them is not the word of Allah Azza wa Number two, which is extremely important, uh, is the fact that an important, inseparable matter to believe in when believing in the Quran is to believe in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a source of legislation alongside the Qur'an. There are many evidences uh, substantiating, proving this, uh, this point. Uh, number one, Allah Azza wa Jal informed us that Sunnah or the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also a revelation from him, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَا ضَلَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Your companion, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is neither misguided nor astray, nor does he speak of his own whims or desires. It is only a revelation revealed. So Allah Azza wa Jal is confirming that everything, everything he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, pertaining to the religion, is revealed from him, Subhanahu Wa Taala. Another point or evidence proving this is Allah informing us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, through his Sunnah, explains the Quran to us. Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Wa anzalna ilayka dhikra." لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ We have sent down to you, O Prophet, the reminder so that you may explain to people what has been revealed to them, i.e. in the Qur'an. Let me give some examples that will clarify what is meant here by the second evidence. Allah Azza wa Jal commanded us to pray the five daily prayers. And it is one of the five practical pillars of Islam. And he commanded us to fast. And that's another practical pillar of Islam. And he commanded us to pay zakah, another pillar of Islam. And finally commanded us to perform hajj. All these practical pillars of Islam were commanded by Allah Azza wa Jal through uh, in the Quran. However, the details of these five pillars are only found, or let me rephrase, a lot of the details, not all the details, a lot of the details pertaining to these five, four pillars, four practical pillars, are only found in the Sunnah. For example, Salah, prayer. Allah Azza wa Jal told us to establish the prayer. But Allah Azza wa Jal did not tell us anywhere in the Quran how many rakahs, how many prayers, what nullifies the prayer, what invalidates it, that is. What are the preconditions of the, the salah? All of these matters are only found in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and that's why he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is reported in Al-Bukhari, he said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you have seen me pray. Now this is addressing the companions, but it is addressing us, 
by means of them conveying to us how he used to pray. Fasting. What are the nullifiers of uh, fasting? What are the conditions of fasting? Again, this is found in the Sunnah. Zakah. Where is this two and a half percent coming from? It's not in the Quran. It's in the Sunnah. The pillars, the uh, obligations of Hajj, what nullifies Hajj, the places where we go and, and assume ihram from, all these details are only found in the Sunnah of the Prophet And therefore, it is mandatory to act upon the Sunnah just like we act upon the Quran. To believe in the Sunnah just as we believe in the Quran. They're both a source of legislation from Allah Azza wa Jal. And thus, whoever denies and rejects the Sunnah is actually rejecting the Quran itself. Now, what are the implications of believing in uh, divine books? Now, believing in them implies that we believe in the wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal and His mercy as well. Because Allah Azza wa Jal legislated in these books for every nation what suits them and suits their time. And we also, the implication of believing in these books, in these books uh, means that we believe that Islam is something represented in the Quran and the Sunnah. Is something that is suitable for every place, every nation, and any time. Another implication of believing in the books is to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal, or one of the attributes of Allah, one of the qualities of Allah Azza wa Jal, Azza wa Jal is that He speaks. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We as Muslims firmly believe that Allah Azza wa Jal spoke all of these books to Jibreel alayhi salam, who went and conveyed them to each messenger as he heard it from his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, one of the implications or another implication of believing in the books is to believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is truthful and his message is sound because other divine books, previous books, have, prof uh, have uh, prophecies of him mentioned in them. Another implication is to firmly believe that the Quran is the final divine book from Allah Azza wa Jal. And that it abrogates and overrules all previous books. As Muslims, we must adopt the Quran as a code of life, as a way of life. And this is one of the implications uh, of believing in the Qur'an. We must use it or refer to it for every matter in our lives. Acts of worship, transactions, manners, judgment, everything. And this is the implication of believing in the Qur'an as a divine book from Allah Azza wa Jal. Now Allah Azza wa Jal sent down these books and especially for us Muslims, the Qur'an, which included all goodness. Goodness in this life and goodness in the hereafter. And that implies that we must be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal for having revealed such a book for us, such a code of life, a book that has in it clarification what He wants from us and how we can achieve servitude to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Final point I'd like to mention in this uh, section here is that we must firmly believe or the implication of believing in these books entails or believing in these books entails that we believe that Allah Azza wa Jal sent all these books and all these messengers with one message only. They're unified in their message and what they called people to. They call people to worship Allah alone. Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ 
إلا نوحي إليه أنه لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدوه We never sent a messenger before you without revealing to him that there is no God worthy of worship except me, so worship me alone. So this is something that we must firmly believe since we believe in the books. We must believe that all of these messages, all of these books call people to this one unified message. What are the fruits of believing in divine books? First and foremost, as we mentioned in the previous uh, articles or pillars of faith, is that the one who believes in them has fulfilled one of the pillars or articles of faith. Another thing that we gain is the feeling of the mercy of Allah and his bounty upon us as Muslims. For having revealed to us a book that guides us and did not leave us unattended to follow our desires and wins. He put boundaries for us. He set a code for us through this book, Al-Quran, and he obliged us to follow it. And thus, we are maintained on the path, except for those who willingly choose to stray away. Everybody uh, looks for happiness. Well, this is one of the results, one of the fruits we gain as Muslims when we follow the Quran. Uh, because it is, as I just mentioned earlier, it shows us how to achieve servitude, how to become true slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when you become a true slave of Allah Azza wa Jal, you have actually achieved ultimate happiness and you have become or you have freed yourself from servitude or being enslaved to anything else. By virtue of believing in the Quran, one frees himself from all types of confusions. We live in an era where you can have all types of confusions, intellectual confusions, doctrinal confusions, doubts and misconceptions are being showered over you from all directions. But when one adheres to the book of Allah, to the Quran, and to the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because together they make the, uh, they are the source of legislation. When you refer to these sources of legislations, of legislation, you free yourself from all types of confusions. Finally, now there are many things I can mention, but again, due to the restriction of time, uh, we have to limit ourselves. Survival. Survival from straying away, from deviating in this life, maintaining yourself on a, on a path, on a straight path that's clear, that has boundaries, that has set rules and laws, and therefore, being on that clear path makes, gives you survival in this life from deviation and leads you to salvation in the hereafter. Now the last section of today's class or session is uh, something that is quite touching. It is the virtue or virtues of reading the Quran, understanding the Quran, memorizing the Quran. Uh, and there are so many. And you can't actually list them in, in the order of which one is best, because they're all such beautiful virtues resulting from memorizing or reciting or understanding the Quran. The first one I would like to mention is that it is 
the Quran, a means of guidance. It reforms the individual and the community at large. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم. Indeed, this Quran guides to that which is best. When it guides you to the best, it will guide you to the best of dealings, the best of manners, the best of character. As an individual, so you're reformed. And when individuals get reformed, the community at large gets reformed. And when communities get reformed, the nation at large gets reformed. It saves you from destruction and misguidance. The Prophet Wasallam, when he spoke about the Quran, and this is reported by Al-Tabarani and classed as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, adhere to it, act upon it, for you will never be destroyed nor misguided once you do so. So by virtue of adhering and acting upon the Quran and its instructions, you save yourself from being destroyed or straying away from the path of Allah. Reciting it, Allah made reciting it a sign of true faith, true belief. Allah Azza wa Jal says, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ those to whom we have given the book, recite it with its true recital. They are the ones who truly believe in it. And this is enough to be granted this testimony from Allah Azza wa Jal that we are true believers is enough reason for us to continuously recite the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Next point. It makes the love of Allah Azza wa and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam enter your heart and rest there very deep in the heart. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Al-Bayhaqi and classed as sound by Al-Albani, Hassan, that is. He said, whoever would like to love Allah Azza wa and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then let him recite the Qur'an. You want to love Allah? You want to love, to love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then recite the book of Allah. One of the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, once said, if our hearts were pure, we will never feel that we've recited enough from the book of Allah. We would, like to, would want to continue and continue. And con if the heart is pure, and connected. Obtaining a high rank, a lofty rank in this life. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, attached glorifying Allah Azza wa Jal with honoring the person who memorizes the Quran. You see how lofty this rank is in this life. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and again, this is reported by Al-Bayhaqi, classed as sound by Al-Albani. He said, a sign of glorifying Allah is to honor the one who memorizes the Quran, who is neither negligent of it, or, nor extravagant with its regards, meaning he doesn't recite it just to show off. So, Allah Azza wa Jal, through His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will give you this honor, the honor of being in a rank that respecting you is a sign of glorifying Him, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Honoring you is a sign of glorifying Allah, the Almighty and Exalted, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Muslim. He said, Allah raises by virtue of this book, 
raises the rank in this life and the hereafter, some people. And he, by virtue of Quran, he humiliates others as a punishment to them for neglecting the Quran. So you have two types. Those who are always reciting, always trying to understand, always trying to memorize. Allah raises their ranks in this life and in the hereafter. Whilst on the other hand, the opposite of that is that Allah Azza wa Jal humiliates those who are negligent and abandon the Quran. On the day of judgment, we will all be looking for something to rescue us. Well, the Quran, as the Prophet وسلم, told us, and this is reported by Muslim, the Quran will come on the day of judgment. As the Prophet وسلم, said in this narration, he said the Quran will come on the day of judgment interceding for the person who used to recite it or memorize it. He will intercede to Allah Azza wa to admit him into Jannah. Also on the Day of Judgment, it will be a reason or a source of dignity for the person. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi, classed as sound by al -Albani. He said, the person of the Qur'an who memorizes or frequently recited the Qur'an will come on the Day of Judgment and the Qur'an will say, please listen attentively. It will say, O oh Allah, adorn him or her. So he will be given a crown of dignity he will be make, he will wear a crown uh, of dignity. Then it will say, O oh Allah, increase him, give him more. So he will be dressed with the garment of dignity. And then the best of the best, it will say, O oh Allah, be pleased with him. So Allah Azza wa Jal becomes pleased with him or her. Those who memorize the Quran, who frequently recited the Quran in this life, will get this great, magnificent prize from Allah Azza wa Jal, the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Reciting the Quran is one of the means of getting multiple or multiplied rather multiplied rewards. Reciting the Quran will be on the day of judgment a source and a means of receiving multiplied rewards. In the book of At-Tirmidhi, and it was classed as authentic by Al-Albani, the Prophet Wasallam said, whoever recites a single letter from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal will have one reward recorded for him and each will be multiplied tenfold. Now we need to know that there are more than 325,000 letters in the Quran. Put a zero in front of that, that's three million and a quarter when you recite the book of Allah Azza wa entirely. And that's only according to this narration. There is another narration in which the, the Prophet وسلم, speaks about how Allah Azza wa Jal multiplies reward. In it, he وسلم, said, after he said tenfolds, he said up to 700 multiples. Can you imagine? Now, I don't know what the result of multiplying 700 times 325,000 is, but I'm sure it's a lot of, uh, a lot of rewards. It's a lot of reward. One will obtain a special rank with Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
mentioned, and this is reported by Ahmed Class as authentic by everybody. He said about the people of the Quran, those again, those who memorize it, frequently recite it, understand it, teach it, learn it. He said, Allah has special people. A, a selected group of people, a chosen group of people. Now this is truly lofty. So the companions asked the Prophet ﷺ, who are they, O Messenger of Allah? He ﷺ said, they are the people of the Qur'an. Those who memorize, those who understand, those who learn, those who teach, those who recite. These are the people of the Qur'an who will be having this special rank, being special to Allah. You know, when, you, when someone tells you, you're special to me, you feel that you're cared for, that you feel that you're important to that person. So imagine if the person who's telling you that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can you imagine if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is standing in front of you and says, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, you're really special to me. You feel honored. Now, the one to whom you're special is not a human being, is not, it's not even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is Allah. The magnificent, Allah the exalted, Allah the almighty. You will be special to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see how important it is to make Quran a serious part of our daily tasks. Allocate a special time for it. You see now why it is that important? We love our parents, or we claim to. Now, memorizing the Quran is one of the way of benefiting our parents, honoring our parents on the Day of Judgment. In the book of Ahmed, and it's classed as sound by al -Albani, the Prophet وسلم, said, Quran will come on the Day of Judgment in the shape or the form of a man who's pale. His face is pale, his looks are pale. Now the scholars, when commenting on this phrase here, or the description of the Quran coming in the form of a pale man, they said, it is the way a human being or the person he or she would be as a result of frequently performing Qiyam al-Layl reciting the Quran. They will become pale due to the lack of sleep. Then the Quran will come to the person and say, do you recognize me? I am the one who kept you up in dunya at night to pray Qiyam. And I am the one who made you thirsty during the days for Siyam. Because the one who recites frequently, who memorizes, adheres to the instructions in the Quran and in the Sunnah that highly recommend Qiyam al-Layl and uh, fasting. So he would tell him, I am the one who kept you up at night and made you thirsty during the day. And then it will tell him, indeed every merchant wants to profit from his or her trade. And today your profit is greater than any trade. What you will gain today is by far more than anyone can make as a profit from his business. 
then what happens? He will be given bliss in his right hand and eternity in his left hand. The, the uh, scholar said that this is a metaphor to say that he will be living in an eternal blissful life thereafter. And then the crown of dignity will be placed on his head and his parents will be dressed with two garments. The value of which, the preciousness of which, the beauty of which cannot be found in this worldly life. Then they would ask, how did we get this? They will be told, it is by virtue of your child memorizing the Quran. So now we know the importance of memorizing the Quran. Finally, because we're running out of time, uh, the person who frequently recites the Qur'an, will have a beautiful reputation on earth and in the heavens. In the book of Imam Ahmad, and it's classed as sound by Al-Albani, a man came to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, radiallahu anhu. And he said, advise me. Give me an advice. Guide me to something that's good. He said, you have asked me something which I had asked the Prophet وسلم, and he والسلام, told me frequently recite the Quran because it is your soul in the heavens and your mention on earth. What does that mean? The scholar said it is your soul in the heavens meaning that the angels in the heavens will frequently praise you and say good things about you. And that people, your mention on earth, he said that you will become honored amongst people because Allah Azza wa Jal will make people of this life on earth always speak good of you, praise you all the time whenever you may, your name is mentioned. With this I conclude, but I have something to say at the end here is that we're approaching Ramadan. Ramadan is about three weeks or less uh, away from starting. And Ramadan is called the month of the Quran. Because the Prophet وسلم, used to attach great importance to reciting the Quran during the month of Ramadan. And he would review it with Jibreel alayhi salam during the month. The, the, uh, the scholars, the companions and the scholars after them used to allocate their time for the recite, recitation of the Quran during Ramadan. As a matter of fact, many of the famous Imams throughout the Islamic history, whenever the time, uh, the, the month of Ramadan would start, they would immediately stop teaching anything and focus on nothing but reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah azza wa jal to make us amongst those who recite, memorize, understand, learn, and teach his book. And make us amongst those who hear and act upon the best of what they hear. اللهم آمين